Regalia is made possible in part by Bernina of Oklahoma City, providers of quality, precision sewing machines. And by War Child Society, designers of native apparel, t-shirts, decals, and more. And by generous contributions from viewers like you. Welcome back to Make Your Regalia with me, Joaquin Lone Lodge, based here in Concho, Oklahoma, home of the Southern Cheyenne, Southern Arapaho people. And today I've got another great show for you and another awesome guest. Thank you, Verna Street, for coming on the show. My pleasure. <laughs> um, this is, you know, like kind of a show of how to and building and also repairs. And say, Verna's going to do a little segment on how to repair moccasins, actually, how to extend them, right? Yes. That's awesome. Now, um, you know, I've known you for a really long time. You've always danced around the Palos, and so I've known you. Um, you've always danced at a women's uh, fancy shawl, right? Yes. And how'd you get started in that? Um, I went to my first powwow and just fell in love with the dance and just aspired to uh, learn as much as I could in and out of the arena. Cool. And where do you come from? I mean, where, where is your, where's your roots at? Um, from Hollister, North Carolina. Okay. A long ways from here. And uh, what tribe is that out there? I have the, um, I'm part of Ch the Cherokee and the Meharan Nations. Right on, right on. But, you know, like, I know from my style of dance, I also dance men's fancy. It's kind of a, like more athletic style of dance. So what do you do to actually, you know, keep up with that? Um, I like to do aerobics. I've even um, started to develop my own style of aerobics that incorporates the exact muscles that um, you need for your uh, specific uh, dance style. Yeah. I call it powwow aerobics, but it's in the works. But I enjoy doing T25 and uh, kickboxing, and I have tried a little yoga. Right on, right on. I haven't really got to that yoga yet, but you know, maybe, maybe next year I might get down with that, but I don't know, I just, just don't know just yet. <laughs> now, I've also heard that you, you actually have a dance class that you teach, like kids, right? Yes. Um, well, actually, we, we cater to all ages. Mm -hmm. We're just trying to get um, Native Americans um, healthy. With, with doing that, we're trying to keep them involved in the circle at the same time. So it's called the Raven Street Dance Studio, and it's located in Hollister, North Carolina. That's cool. And about how many students do you have out there? Um, I have about 30 students right now. So every day we keep getting more and more. Boys and girls and everything? All ages. Um, at this time, it does uh, cater more towards the children. But um, I do have a couple of adult students as well. So do you dance traditional dance for the men and for the boys too? Yes, um, basically I teach the, my students how to be prepared physically for being in the arena. It's not um, easy to dance intertribals and contest and drive all night. So you have to condition your body to be able to do so. Right on, right. So you actually wore hoop too sometimes. Huh? <laughs> A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> All right. Well, let's go ahead and get started with this. Um, so this is going to be like an extension of the actual moxin, right? Yes. With the studio, I have a lot of times where um, parents have purchased a pair of moccasins such as these here. Well, minus the sole, that is. And um, they don't want to necessarily buy a new pair because their child is growing so fast. Right. So I have a lot of times where the parent wants to save on money and extend a project that's already existing. Mm -hmm. So um, how we do that is we uh, separate the sole from the moccasin top, which we've already done here. Mm -hmm. And then um, we will start our layout for the new shape of the moccasin since the child has grown. Right on. And so do you use like rawhide for this lot, the sole and stuff like that? Um, yes, you can. But also with extensions, it just depends on what the parent exactly um, wants to do. Do they want to make this the, the permanent next style or are they going to want an extension later? Right. As fast as kids grow, it's just a lot easier to use um, a thinner leather sole um, so that it's easier to take apart, if, yeah. if the case may be in the future. And plus, you know, it's also repairing the sole, because I've seen some really holy moccasins out there before. <laughs> I've seen, like, toes hanging out and some, some moccasins that talk to you and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so this is kind of like how to repair that, that one specific piece, all right? Right, right. We're, um, there weren't, weren't really, really any um, repairs as far as the beadwork. Because the child grew so fast, um, they were only able to use it for just a couple powwows. Ouch. Right. Yeah. Hurts the pockets a little there. So um, with that, I, I have taken the sole off the bottom, and then we have remeasured the child's footprint, which is here. Um, we First, we, we'll take the shoe off of our student. And um, I use uh, just a regular paper like this is like a 
what do you call this? Um, Paper bag. Yeah, like, you know, from a regular grocery store and yeah, stuff. Yeah. yeah. I used to use that to do a lot, a lot of my geometrics and stuff like, uh, yes. and I uh, keep my templates. And sometimes what I like to do is uh, I masking tape them, kind of give them a little bit more durability and yeah, stuff. Yeah, that works well. Yeah. Um, also cardboard when you want to make some, you know, designs more permanent. Yeah. But um, this is the uh, soul of Devin Sproul, one of my champion grass dancers from mm -hmm. back in Hollister, North right Carolina. On. Devin getting a shout out out there. Yes, he is. <laughs> And so we measured his foot with just a sock on, um, flat to the ground, and this was the um, shape that we got. We also measure from the bridge of the foot, which is across the top, the arch, um, across was six inches approximately, and then from that same arch to the toe was five inches. This gives us um, a, a reference when we're drawing the new foot pattern. Right, right. So then, I take the um, sole print and I'll measure up about one inch because when you have the top of the moccasin, as you see here, around the back is where it goes around the back of the heel. So we allow about an inch leeway for that in the back. That allowance, that kind of like measurement allowance. Right. And then I just center it up in the middle here. And then I move over, and this is where I will use the, the, the uh, six inch and the five inch measurement that we took earlier. Um, I'll come to the center and find my center, which is half of six is what? Uh, that would be three. <laughs> okay, just check it. And that's our center point here. Then we measure over three and three, which makes six, which is about here. Okay, then from that same center point, and you can poke it through so you have an accurate little dot there. Right. I'm going to draw a little cross here. And this is actually the top of the moccasin, right? Right, this is where your foot it would, will enter into the shoe, yeah. to the moccasin. And you want to give that round look. You don't want to give that cone at the very top. The, no. The little elf shoe. <laughs> no pointy toes. So then from that same center point, we're going to measure up five, because that was the measurement that we got from the bridge to the top of the foot. So right on. from this point... Here is five. Now, I have found after making many pairs of moccasins that a lot of times when you measure from that bridge to the end of your, you know, your toe there, that it didn't give a good allowance for the foot to go in. It was too close up mm -hmm. on your foot. So that's why I'm going to take it in about a half an inch to four and a half. And sometimes, you know, when you make these moccasins, uh, I, I like to use almost like the same, uh, this baby cloth uh, material and kind of try it out beginning before you actually go and get regular rawhide and, you know, like buckskin hides because that's a little bit more expensive. If you use this and kind of form fit it, you can actually perfect it with uh, the cheaper materials before Very you true. actually go, you know, the true Very buckskin. True. Before you, they always say measure twice and cut once. Right. Yeah, so using, a, also these days, as fast as they are growing, using hide, you know, those are expensive supplies. And so if you're going to most likely extend the moccasin or have major repairs in the future, it is good to go with the low end cost. Right. Okay, so we have those two points and we go ahead and we draw a, a line down that center to the end. This is where it will be cut here and here on these two lines once we've um, add, added on the beadwork to the moccasin and that is where the foot will enter Cool. once cool. it's sewn up. Okay. So now that we have those measurements, I have this outside line here and here. I'm going to go ahead and just start drawing in the same shape of the existing moccasin. Mm -hmm. I'll come up and notice this is the right foot. So it caters in inward. And so we will do the same when we're making this extension. We take this all around up to the top, curve it. And I'm just following this because this moccasin was made very well. And um, so I'm just copying their work. Right, right. <laughs> now, I've also heard that anatomically the right foot is like bigger than your left foot. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Might have to try that out. I don't have any socks on, so I'm going to put my feet over here. So after we have the shape drawn 
And that's why it is good to use pencil. So you can erase or, you know, if there are mistakes made. So now we're at the point where we've got our little outline um, done and you're gonna go ahead and cut this out, right? Yes, uh, we're gonna follow the line, but we leave just a little leeway, yeah. a little lip and edge, uh, always with most projects. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut leaving the same amount all the way around as far as your margin goes. And that's where we are here. Cool. All right, so now we could spray glue if we'd like. I love using spray glue. What kind of spray glue do you use? Um, Elmer's is a great brand. Uh, even the, the, the Walmart brand or the Dollar General brand is just as fine, just to get a place of reference. But it, it sometimes does gum up your needle if you're going to have to use a sewing machine. And so at this point, um, the glue, with, I would just, I'm going to go ahead and just sew this so that the two layers are now one. Okay. All okay. right. And now we'll come to the segment where we're going to sew it together. Uh, once again, I want to thank Bernina of Oklahoma City for donating our brand new sewing machine. Really appreciate it. This is way <laughs> nicer than what I've got at home. But, uh, so I heard you were giving me this. All right, you never know. You know, oh. if we got insurance. And... <laughs> but uh, how, how are we going to do this? Are you going to do a straight stitch or a zigzag, or how are you going to do it? Um, I would start with a simple straight stitch. Um, we will go back around again with a zigzag to reinforce it, but just so that it stays in place at first, the straight stitch is best to use. Okay, cool. I did um, earlier. You saw that I had a. T that was drawn here on mm -hmm. the um, new pattern. So we'll line that up with the existing T and then we will begin stitching. Yeah, that thing is smooth. Yes, it is. <laughs> so Verna, how many powers do you think we've gone to a year? Uh, one year we hit 35 in one year. Oh, Yes, we travel all over the United States and into Canada. I want to start um, taking uh, the Raven Street Dance Studio um, a step further and visiting uh, the local health fairs um, amongst the Native American communities just to try and um, show people um, different ways to be healthy. Um, that are more realistic to our lifestyle. Right, right. And it's always good to give back to the community because, you know, once you dance for so many years, it's just like, it feels good to just give the, that talent back to, you know, someone that can, you know, like take dance and hopefully dance takes them places too. Very true, very true. I know it's taken me um, further than I ever imagined. Using a wider stitch is a little bit better. Uh -huh. So that it doesn't see how it's bunching just a little. Yeah. But it just gives it um, a loose but firm hold. So about just about all the corners you're actually tacking down, right? Right, uh, all along the edge. I will stop here. It's always good to run your machine back and then forth again mm -hmm. at the end, so that you have a the interlocking stitch. Yes. Then I'll come back to where I started on this end and just finish up this side so that all sides are secure. I'm in love with this machine. <laughs> right. <laughs> we can smuggle it out of here. We'll try. Hint, hint, Bernina. <laughs> <laughs> So along with, you know, women's fancy shawl, do you also do any other styles too? Yes, I, I love dancing all around. I even was able to um, participate in a uh, switch all around this year at the Morongo Pow Wow out in California. Oh, right. Yeah, I, so uh, if you didn't notice, uh, my rocker was oh, pretty All right, that, that's, that's very important. You yeah, I give you a run for your money. <laughs> <laughs> all right, now that it is uh, stitched all the way around, we're going to go ahead and cut along this seam here and here to create the T. Okay. It is best to go ahead and um, cut these loose strings since we um, we did the reinforcement. We don't have to tie a knot. Here we forgot to, so we'll go ahead and tie a knot. And that's just simply so that the um, stitch doesn't start to unravel. Especially on the moccasin, you're going to have a lot of movement, sweat, athlete's foot, you, you, right, know, you right. name it. So it causes the stitches to um, 
sometimes unravel, which is not a good thing. And this is kind of a newer style do, using like the sewing machine. A long time ago when they used to do this, it was always just with needle and you know sinew and kind of the old school ways and stuff like that. But this is kind of a more modern style. Right. We would never have, well, we wouldn't have had um, access to these types of materials, but thanks to Hobby Lobby and Walmart, Walmart, love Walmart, <laughs> uh, we're able to buy these items. Um, fairly Old secret easy. Hobby Lobby. Yes, the Hobby Lobby. <laughs> this is going to be a little bit harder to get into, uh -huh. but we'll just pull that layer back and snip slowly because you don't want to cut any threads that we don't need. Or cut the bead line. It's so true. <laughs> it's a little hard to get in there, but we'll make it work. So have you ever done this like right before grand entry or anytime soon? Um, I have had to sew up a moccasin blowout just before grand entry, but um, not this extensive. Please don't wait until <laughs> right, exactly. 30 minutes before. And come to, run into you. <laughs> to realize that um, your child has grown in the last six months. Uh, that tends to stress me out a little. Right. So now that we have it secure, it is all one new piece. Right on. All right. So now um, we're going to go ahead and see how the bias was on the outside of the original. Right. Um, that's to hold the layers together. Um, we're going to wait and um, add the bias at the end once we have, because we're going to layer this again to, to leather after. But what we're going to do now is we're going to add beadwork. Okay. Um, it just depends on the um, extensive, how extensive the parent or, you know, your client wants to take the repair. If they're really, really on a budget, I mean, then you would use hide instead of um, the white, this white material so that you could just show hide here and then just add a bias and make the moccasin bigger. Yeah. Well, this one, they wanted to um, have extra beadwork. Okay. So um, now we're going to come over here to the bead section and I'm going to explain that process. Okay. So now we're at the point where we're going to sew the bias on the top and around the edges of the, your moccasin, right? Yes, we just cut the, um, the T and the, the two pieces are now one, mm -hmm. but we're going to secure the outside edges. We're not going to run a bias across the back because um, th there could be different, a give or it could be a maybe not meet so well, so right. we won't obligate ourselves to the back. But we will um, get double fold, extra long, or double fold, extra wide, sorry, right, right. bias tape and run it on our outside seam. Usually, usually it's always on sale at Walmart for some reason. Yes. Now you always do your bias tape and then you bead afterwards, right? Um, yes. Uh, everyone has their own way of doing things, but this does seal the edge and it gives it a nice border for you to um, bead next to. Right, right. Plus once the beadwork is um, on the, the moccasin, it's pretty tough to get that bias tape um, close to the edge like it is done here unless it's put on first. Right. And so then yeah. we did the inside and we'll add it to the outside edge here now. Okay. Sometimes the bias tape is actually to um, seal an edge, but sometimes it's, it's for looks as well. Yeah, because you can color co uh, coordinate your uh, bias tape, right? Yes. Um, I do like to start the beadwork on the inside, um, not actually overlapping the bias because lots of times the bias will get dirty with wear and tear or um, you'll want to change out your entire outfit bias, um, you know, to give it a new look. So you don't want to commit by um, beading on top of the bias um, necessarily because you, you do want that leisure to be able to change it later. So you're saying you don't use white bias tape? Uh, not on moxes, <laughs> that's for sure. That's true. Not with kids. Or myself, that is. <laughs> so we're rounding the top of the foot. So now we're back at the segment where we're going to start to bead, right? We've uh, we got yes. a finished product. Uh, everything's biased up and ready to rock. Um, so you're going to start, how is, what style of beading are you going to do? I'm going to use lazy stitch. Um, this, the stitch that is already used is called applique, or you can use one or two needles, and it's a continuous line of beads. Mm -hmm. I'm doing a different technique called lazy stitch, where it's the rows that they go up and down all the way around this way. Yeah, and of course, you're going to cover like the old bias tape and just continue on with the new design, right? Yes, the reason why I didn't remove the bias tape here is because you don't really know sometimes how damaged the actual item can be. Right. Especially with, when you're working with moccasins. I mean, one layer could be looser or thinner than the other, and you don't want to start tearing apart you know, the edges where you're going to have to adhere the new 
panel on the underneath, if yeah. that makes any sense. And what kind of uh, size beads are we going to go with? These are size 9 three cuts. Um, I like to use these beads because um, they take do up. take up a lot of space, um, but then they also have a cut and a shininess to them as well. Right, right. Um, I'm going to switch it up and make the background yellow so that we have uh, the border. We'll um, just give it a, a more dimensional of a, um, a design instead of having the red. Plus, I didn't match up the red when I went to the bead store, Ooh. which happens quite often, right. as uh, more experienced beaders know. They can change the dye a lot, um, you know, within days, it seems, after you've bought a color, and then you won't be able to match that up. So that's another reason why I've decided to make the border an an opposite um, background. Yeah, and I, I've done that so many times before when I started projects. You usually have to buy a lot of the same beads at once because sometimes when you do run out and you go back, it, you don't have the same color. That's right. Um, I bead right off of the actual um, hank. Um, so these strands have um, beads on them, so I pull off one end and I tie a knot around it. Then I come up to the top of the hank and I pull it off the hank. So then um, my beads aren't scattered all over, and I can run my needle right through the beads. Okay. So, That's a different technique than me, but yeah, it works. I see it. Yes. Um, I've been known to drop lots of beads, so um, th I learned this trick along the way. I'm going to go ahead and separate another line for my red. I decided to go with um, a simple triangle. This um, outfit is... Uh, basic junior boys um, grass dance outfit. So I didn't want to take away from the existing um, teepee designs, but I didn't want to get too intricate either because uh, this is just a repair or just an extension. I'm not trying to, you know, make it from scratch. So right. I'm trying to tie my end here just so I'm not losing any more beads than the ones I already dropped. Okay, so we have that insecure. And I have the two colors that I'm going to work with at this time, which is yellow and red. Um, I have found that it is best to start at the top of the moccasin when you're doing the border. The reason why is because if you start here on the end and you start going around, you have to make it spaced so that you get this curve. Mm -hmm. if, if you're off just by a little bit, you could get the toe just like the design, if there's a, a design in the toe, completely wrong. So I have just found that for me, starting at the top works best. So I'll just come to the center of this design and come up with my needle, and I'll get as close to the red bead, beaded line as possible. Um, I am using a size um, 13. I wish I did have a thicker needle, but at, at this time I'm using a size 13 beading needle. You can use whatever you know works for you. Um, the design is going to be just a simple triangle. Okay. We're going to keep it simple today. So um, with the triangle, I have a little pattern here. Someone said it looks like this is a Da Vinci <laughs> <a four> code. <laughs> But it's just um, in case I get lost on what a triangle looks like. Some people, you know, they have their quirks, and this is one thing I don't understand. But, you know, <laughs> if it works for you, it works for you. Right. It looks like the Da Vinci Code. But. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to do a regular triangle, which is in red. So um, the middle line of the triangle, which I will be starting in the middle of the design, okay. will be a full row of red. So it's... Your normal row of lazy stitch is seven beads. That's so that you can have a center if you need. Mm -hmm. So then I'm going to make, since a triangle, in order for it to form, I'm going to have seven beads across here. So as we go down around, you'll add one more of the background to make the triangle come out. You don't understand that, do you? I have no clue. All right, well, I'll show you. All right, all right. If this is the center of our triangle, I'm going to put on seven red beads. Counting, there's seven. I pull down that row and lay it flat. Since this is the center and the top, I'm going to lay it flat just like this. And go down at the end of the seventh bead. Okay, then I'll come up beside it. You have to leave a little more of a space on the um, outside mm -hmm. edge than the inside so that you can create the curve. Yeah, because, you know, if you went, like, really close together, it's not going to look right. It's just going to bunch right, up. Right, right. And the, the design won't form. It's a little tricky, but you'll and with, learn. And with practice and, like, repetition, you kind of get better at it. Most, so. most definitely. So now we're putting on one of the background, which is yellow, and we're putting on 
6, which totals 7. Okay. I am going to leave um, a slight space in between here. I'm going to add a row of rhinestones. You'll see that. So that each, um, it's, it's because there's kind of, there is a little of a hump there, and it's to actually add a little um, shine and to um, cover up that um, it is an actual extension. So we are back with our almost finished product. This uh, project is kind of like a project in progress, right? Yes. Okay. A work in progress, like R you. Right on. <laughs> I'll get there one of these days. <laughs> so, but Lots what we're gonna do is, <laughs> <laughs> so what we're gonna do is we're gonna fi you're gonna finish up beading all this and stuff like that. But we kind of got the idea is you're just gonna like uh, do all the tack work and tack all the beads down from there. Yes, we're just adding an extension of the beadwork, which is a couple of rows of lazy stitch around. As you can see, the um, design that I've chosen, the triangles, will start forming as I go around. I have red, then green, then a blue, and um, make them go all the way around to the um, to the bottom edge here. Right on, right on. Uh, you're going to continuously beading all the way around like that, right? Yes, I'm going to continue the design, alternating um, the triangles in color, um, probably doing two rows of lazy stitch to make it fit his um size that he is now. Right on, right on. Now this style of stitch is a different style I kind of beat, but if you want to reference any of the past shows, we have season one, episode five, and season uh, one, episode 13 with my grandmother on there. So you can reference those uh, shows actually for beadwork styles. Um, this one is like a total different style too. Um, but once again, you know, I want to thank you for coming on the show. Really do appreciate it. Uh, I want to give props out to Ravens Dance Studios out there. You know, if you're in Hollister, North Carolina, and you want to, like, uh, try out your traditions and stuff, um, you know, definitely give you a call, you know, because yes. I know you know all the different styles and, you know, show people how to rock out their mocks. Yes, and we have a gift from the studio. We want to give you a T-shirt custom for you. Um, yes, with the Raven Street Dance Studio, we just want to see people getting healthy through their traditional way of life, so it's wow. been a pleasure being here. I really do appreciate this, you know, like, and, you know, I'm definitely going to rock this out in the next Powell. And once again, you know, I want to thank everyone for tuning in. I want to thank uh, FNX for rebroadcasting this, uh, Powell's.com, uh, Bernie of Oklahoma City uh, for donating this, like, uh, beautiful sewing machine that we've got here. <laughs> and once again, for all the viewers out there, thank you for tuning in uh, from, with me, Joaquin Lone Lodge. Hello, thank you.